former U.S. President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty on Tuesday to federal criminal charges that he unlawfully kept national security documents after he left office. Trump is the only former president to be accused with a federal crime and is currently making a comeback bid for the White House. Trump has repeatedly proclaimed his innocence and accused President Joe Biden's administration of targeting him. He faces 37 charges including the Espionage Act which criminalizes unauthorized possession of defense information and conspiracy to obstruct justice. The Pentagon on Tuesday announced that it was strengthening its support for Ukraine as its counter-offensive against Russia gets underway. The newly announced package by the Biden administration is set to provide $325 million worth of arms and equipment to Ukraine. The new military aid includes critical air defense capabilities, munitions for high mobility artillery rocket system, anti-tank weapons and armored vehicles. This is the 40th aid package to the war-torn country approved by the Biden dispensation which brings the total military help to a staggering $40 billion. The US State Department has stated that it is currently seeking consular access to an American musician who has been living in Russia for more than a decade and has recently been detained. Michael Travis Leake was recently arrested on suspicion of drug trafficking in Russia. Leak faces charges of production or distribution of drugs which carry a sentence of up to 20 years in prison. Leak is the third American detained in Russia in recent years amid heightened tensions between Washington and Moscow. Ahead of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Washington, reports suggest that the Biden administration is pushing New Delhi to advance a deal for a dozen US-made armed drones. India has long expressed interest in buying large armed drones from the United States. However, bureaucratic roadblocks have stalled the drone deals, speculated to be around 2 to $3 billion. During his visit, Prime Minister Modi and President Biden are also expected to discuss co-production of munition and ground vehicles like the armoured personnel carriers. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky hailed advances by Ukraine's troops near the long-besieged city of Bakhmut in the east. He also praised forces on the southern front. Zelensky said that his forces are moving forward. The president also spoke about a Russian missile attack in his birthplace of Kiviri in the central Ukraine. However, Russia has not acknowledged any Ukrainian gains. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that there is no immediate need to mobilize forces to confront the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Russian President Putin has expressed that Russia was considering to withdrawing from the Black Sea grain deal, saying that Moscow had been cheated over implementation of the parts of the accord. During a televised meeting on Tuesday, Putin said the deal brokered by the United Nations and Turkey was intended to help friendly countries in Africa and Latin America. However, Europe turned out to be the largest importer of Ukrainian grain, providing a key source of foreign currency to Kyiv. Russian President Putin has also said that Russia is open to peace talks over Ukraine. However, the only way to stop the conflict was for Western countries to end their arms supplies to Kyiv. During the televised meeting on Tuesday, Putin expressed that the West was seeking to defeat Russia in Ukraine and said that Moscow had its own peace plan for that country.
Emergency services put out flames early on Tuesday in Kiriri after what officials claim was a massive missile attack by Russia on the central Ukrainian city. In a video posted on Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, trees and vehicles were seen completely charred and flames were being doused in a burning building. The country's top military command said that air forces destroyed 10 out of 14 cruise missiles Russia launched on Ukraine. In yet another incident of mass shooting, at least 10 people were shot in the American city of Denver on Tuesday. The firing happened just hours after the Denver Nuggets basketball team won its first NBA title. According to the city police, the incident was likely sparked by a drug deal gone wrong. Three of the injured were in a critical condition, but the authorities have stated that all the injured are expected to survive. Over 350 people have been killed in the 291 mass shooting incidents in US this year, triggering demands for strict gun control action by the legislators. Israeli forces killed a Palestinian teenager during a military raid in a refugee camp in the occupied West Bank on Tuesday, triggering a two-hour gunfight. According to residents, Israeli troops surrounded the house of a wanted fighter in the refugee camp. The skirmish led to nine, the 19-year-old boy being shot by the Israeli forces, while eight more Palestinians were wounded with gunshot wounds. However, the military has not issued any comment on the incident. Israel has intensified its military raids amid a spate of deadly street attacks by Palestinians in the Israeli cities. A teenage member of the Japan Self-Defense Force was arrested on Wednesday on suspicion of attempted murder after a shooting incident that resulted at least one fatality. According to the reports, the shooter was an SDF member, while the injured included a man in his 50s and two in their 20s. However, no civilian casualties were reported. Shootings are extremely rare in Japan, where gun ownership is tightly regulated and anyone seeking to own a gun must go through a rigorous vetting process.